How many people like storms? Some people like storms. How many people are afraid of storms? Some people don't like the thunder and the lightning. How many people are respectful of storms? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, probably the, that's probably the smart place to be. I kind of like storms. I kind of like to, I, I like to hear the rain beating down, especially on a tin roof. That's a neat sound. But it keeps you mindful of the force of the water coming down, doesn't it? And when you add a little wind to that, it will sit there and look out your window. Of course, I always like them from inside my house, not from being out in them. But, but, but you're able to look out your window and you see the power of that wind and it bows those trees and kind of comes back, the tree bounces back, right? That's kind of a neat thing to watch. Imagine just how powerful that wind is. And, and some thunder and lightning in there, and it can get real exciting real fast, can it? Especially when that thunder hit or that lightning hits close to the house. <laughs> you know, it might make you rethink looking out the window <laughs> quite quite so intensely. It gets loud. It gets, that even can get scary for those of us who like storms, right? It pops all around us. And then you add a little bit of velocity to that wind. Over a prolonged period of time, they call that what? A hurricane, right? And <coughs> hurricanes, they really never like it. As long as you're inside, you probably don't have a whole lot to worry about. As long as you prepare for it, with today's weather forecast, you find out sometimes weeks ahead of that, there's going to be a hurricane coming, it's going to hit, hit us, and, and you can go to the store with everybody else the day before and buy, like, you're never going to get out of your house again, you know. <laughs> Everybody has to have milk and bread. I'm not really sure what that's for, but everybody has to have a gallon of milk and, and at least one loaf of bread, maybe two loaves of bread to be prepared for the storm, right? And uh, probably the most fearful of the storms is a tornado because you don't have much time to get ready for that. Even with modern technology and being able to forecast, you don't really have a lot of time to get ready for a tornado, and it's so powerful. I mean, it can just pick up houses and towns and communities you know, I don't know, I mean, I, I'd be the guy who, if I, I ever saw a tornado, I, I'd be the guy who gets sucked up in it because I was in my, <laughs> just, just watching it as it came towards me and not being able to react, you know, that's me. I'm just, when I watch them on the Weather Channel, it's just amazing it's how much, so much force, it's whipping, picking up cars, it's unbelievable. And really, where are you going to go to the safe? Around here, there's really, I mean, we have a basement here, I guess, but most houses don't not where I live, so it's, I mean, I guess the inner room, I never figured that out. I guess the glass, you'd be safe from the glass, right? Because, I mean, I, as far as I can see, if you can pick up the whole house, you can pick up the inner room. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> but, but uh, so I don't know if there's really a, a safe place to be in a storm, is it? And we've had our share of storms here in the last, you know, decade or so. Hurricanes have come in, Isabel and Katrina and was it? Will we gender fair? Andrew, so we just so <laughs> no, I'm not picking on, on the women. Um, but 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 there been some big storms that done some damage, right? They they've done a lot of damage to the country, but for the most part, I'd say most of us, it was no more than an inconvenience for, for a lot of us, right? I mean, we stocked up on our milk and our bread and our peanut butter or jelly or ham or whatever it is that we needed, and and we may have lost power. Some of us lost power, and that's the inconvenience. You know, when you lose power for a week or two weeks even, that's, that's inconvenient. It's not fun, but it's not devastating. Right? And, but there are some people who are devastated by storms. They lost their homes. They lost their businesses. Some people lost their lives. So storms can be devastating, even though they may not devastate you today where you're at, right? So when I say I like storms, I don't, I don't mind the rainstorm, but I don't particularly care for those other things that happen in life, what I call spiritual storms, things that come into our lives and, and turn our lives upside down in the blink of an eye. Those things are real fun, aren't they? But more than likely we've all experienced those at some point, right? They come in a lot of different shapes and sizes, right? 
It can be the husband coming home and lost his job today. That's tough. It could be that un unwanted diagnosis from the doctor. That's tough. It could be that unwanted teen pregnancy. It could be that, that bully at school that just won't leave that kid alone. Those are tough. Those are tough storms. It could be the bad financial decision which led to financial distress. It could be the loss of a loved one. There are all kinds of storms, right? And we've all been there. I think we've all been there at some point. The one thing you can count on about storms is that if you're not in the middle of one, or you're not leaving one, that you're probably about to head into one. So dealing with storms is something we all need to know about. Today's scripture reading, we're going to hear about the disciples and they encounter a storm and they have Jesus in the boat with them. If you look at Mark chapter 4, we're going to go ahead and read that now just so that we can have some scripture to go on. Uh, I'll give you a second. Hey, bookmark it. We'll turn there. That day, when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There was, were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up. And the waves broke over the boat, so that they were nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said unto him, Teacher, do, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and they asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. And God bless the gospel. You see, even the disciples had storms in their lives, right? And there's something to be learned from, from how they experienced it. You know, when we experience storms of life, it gives us a learning opportunity. You say, how can I learn from a storm? I'm often afraid or frustrated or angry. But there's an opportunity for us to learn. You see, because when we're in the middle of a storm, it's never, we don't ever feel as small as we do when we're in the middle of a storm. We don't ever feel as humble as when we're in the middle of the storm. You see, because we're in the middle of the storm, we realize how small compared to other things that we really are. When you see the fury of a hurricane, when you see that wind that's able to bend trees almost to the ground, and sometimes to the ground, that rain that, that causes all that damage, and flood, and the power of the water, you realize that the power that you have as a person is very... Small. Right? But it's also that time that we realize how powerful our God is. Because when we are weak, He is strong. Amen. Amen. And at these times when we feel so weak and so vulnerable, that oftentimes we feel more drawn to God than at any other time. Strange, isn't it? Is that 911 call? Is that what he is? <coughs> See, the funny thing is, is that he's there all the time. But there's probably more prayers go up in times of distress than any other time. It's then that we recognize His power. It's then that we're reminded. It's then that we refocus on God. 
And we have that ability to refocus in on just how powerful he is. That is, if we keep the faith. You see, as Christians, most of the time, when you're facing a storm, you have two options. You can either stray, or you can pray. So the question is today is, how do you handle your storm? Are you praying, which draws you closer to God, into conversation with God? Or are you straying? Do you head away from God? Do you try to handle it on your own? Do you try to take things in your hands and say, I, I can fix this. I can take care of this. No, I can do this. Do you put yourself at the center of the universe, or is God at the center of the universe? Is God the source of your power? Is God the source of your strength? You know, the disciples were afraid. They were really afraid. They thought they were going to drown. And maybe they just hadn't really totally got who Jesus really was at that time. They probably really just didn't know. We, you know, we can look back now. We read the whole story. We read the whole gospel. We know who Jesus was. But they may not have totally understood. But even their little understanding, they needed to go wake up Jesus, didn't they? Right? They refocused. They were afraid. Their circumstances were taking over their life. Have you ever had that happen to you? You see, because when you give in to fear, or when you give in to anger, or when you give in to that confusion, you let your circumstances become your guiding light and not your God. They knew they needed to refocus. They went and woke Jesus up, right? Which is what they needed to do. I mean, they were afraid, yet in their boat was the creator of the universe. I mean, think about that. Taking a nap in the front, Jesus wasn't worried. He was taking a nap. This wasn't a big deal to him. He wasn't scared. He was taking a nap. You don't think he felt the wave? You don't think he knew what was coming? He created it. John chapter 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. The Word was God. Was, everything that was created was came through Him, right? And who's the Word? Jesus. And who created everything? God. And God's in control. And if you keep that as your center, your focus point, that no matter what storm I'm in, God is in control. Then you have nothing to fear. You see, when you accept that no matter what happens to me today, God is in control. I know I'll be okay. You see, I may leave this planet, but I'm still going to be okay. I may lose all my money, but little I have. But it's going to be okay. I can lose my hair. It's going to be okay. Right? <coughs> this isn't meant to bring you down. This is meant to bring you down. You see, we offer a God that when we place our focus on Him, when we place our trust in Him, when we place our faith in Him, we know everything is going to be okay. It may not come out the way we want it to. It may not come out the way we think it should. Or we would most likely desire it to. Because I've never won that lottery ticket. I mean, and I think that's the best plan ever. But evidently, that's not God's plan. But He's going to make it okay. If you keep your faith in Him. If you continue to keep your focus in Him. Because He can calm those stor storms. In your life. He can calm those seas. He can, he can calm that wind. And a lot of people will have what they call a crisis of faith when it doesn't happen the way they want it to happen. I've seen people through the years, good folks, strong faith, and things happen, 
And they think God's punishing them. Or they think, how could God let this happen to me? Or if God loved me, how could this happen? And I can tell you, I've been through some tough times. But I don't blame God for my tough times. I seek His face in my tough times. You know, we have to realize that sometimes our tough times are just that, tough times. That our storms are like the real storms of life, Mother Nature. What always happens to the storm? It passes. That's right. It goes away. It's not permanent. It's not here forever. It's just a passing phase. It's just a passing of time. And in due time, it will pass. Right? But God is forever. God is always with you. God will never leave you. You know, the thing that will get you through more tough days than anything else, if you remember simply that. But God told us, I am always with you. Say with me. I am always with you. He is always with you on the hilltops and in the valleys. Because there's going to be some of both. There are going to have days that you think you can't get any life, you just, just can't get any better. That's how I felt yesterday when he's called us to be I'm like, this is a good day. You just can't get any better. That's it. But, but there's going to be bad days too. Our, I'm sure our losses are coming too. You know, there's going to be bad days and there's going to be good days. But, and, and that's kind of, you know, Funny, but, but you know what I'm saying. In, in real life, that happens too. There will be days when you get a raise. There will be days when you get fired. And they're both just days. Yes. In the long scheme of things, at the end of the line, they're just days. Sometimes the circumstance, people say, how's your day? I said, it's good. I got out of bed. <laughs> and when I sit there and think of people who can't, I'm happy to get out of bed. The rest of it, I tell them, is just... It's just details. <laughs> sometimes I like the details, and sometimes not so much. But they're just details. Well, the bottom line is, I got out of bed today. God gave me another day. He gave, He didn't have to give me a day. He didn't have to wake me up this morning. He didn't. So I'm thankful for the day. And it may sometimes it has good details, and sometimes the details they're just not so good. And I really just. Mm, wish I could go back to sleep. <laughs> you know? But nonetheless, he woke me up. But the thing that we need to realize, the thing that we need to grasp onto, the thing that we need to hold on to with all we got, is that God has promised I'll never leave. I'll be there for you and I'll give you what you need. You know, Moses said, I, I can't go talk to Pharaoh. I, I can't even talk. I, you know, my words don't flow right. And God said, who made man's mouth? He said, then I can provide you with what you need. You just need to have the faith to go. And he did, right? And he did. And same thing with us. We have to hold on to that faith. We have to, and sometimes it's hard. Because the trials are hard. And sometimes we feel like God's left us. But he hasn't left you. I'm reminded of a story of William Frey. He was an archbishop, an uh, Episcopal archbishop. He told the story that when he was a younger guy, younger man, that he had taken to reading to the blind students in the, in the school. And he came across this young man. He was reading to him one day. And, and he asked the young man, he said, you know, have, have you always been blind? The man said, no, I lost my sight when I was 13 uh, because of a chemical explosion. He says, wow. He said, well, yeah. how was that? How did, how did you deal with that? He said, it was tough. He said, for the first six months, I wouldn't, didn't even want to come out of my room. He said, I, I did nothing but mow. He said, I would eat, but I never left my room. He said, it was, I had a very hard time. Life had dealt me some cards that I didn't want to deal with. He said, and then one day, my dad came in the room. 
He said, John, winter's coming. And the storm windows need to be put up. And that's your job. And I'm going into the city. When I come back, it needs to be done. <coughs> and with that, he slammed the door. He said, at first, I was, I was so mad. He said, I'm blind. How am I going to put up these storm windows? What is he thinking? Doesn't he see that I can't see? How does he expect me to put these storm windows up? He said, then I channeled that anger. He said, I'm going to do it. I'm going to go up there and put them up. He said, no, I'll fall off the ladder. I'll just be a blind, paralyzed son. That'll show him. He said, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to show him. He went out there and he gathered up the tools and he, and, and, and he, he felt his way out to the, to the barn and gathered up the tools he needed and the ladder and he fell his way to the house and, and he put the storm windows up. And what he came to find out later was he was really in no danger at all. And his dad had never been, <laughs> never been more than four or five feet away from him all the time he was doing. But he needed for him to struggle so he could move forward. But he was there. And he was there to catch him if he needed to. He was there to support him. Sometimes you may not feel God in your presence, but He's there. He's there for you. He's told you. I'll always be with you. Always be with you. <laughs> That's hard to grasp sometimes, isn't it? Sometimes you wonder if God's always with me. Shouldn't I behave differently in time? Yes, you should. You probably should. I think nothing calculates that whole thought or brings up thought all together than that poem, Footprints in the Sand. I think most of us have heard it, but I'm going to read it just in case you haven't heard it to reemphasize it to you. So let me hear you. One night I had a dream. I dreamed I was walking along the beach with the Lord and across the sky flashed scenes of my life. For each scene, I noticed two sets of footprints in the sand. One belonged to me and the other to the Lord. When the last scene of my life flashed before me, excuse me, before us, I looked back at the footprints in the sand. I noticed that many times along the path of my life, there was only one set of footprints. I also noticed that happened that it happened that those were the very lowest and the saddest times of my life. This really bothered me. And I questioned the Lord about it. Lord, you said that once I decided to follow you, you would walk with me all the way. But I have noticed that during the most troublesome times of my life, there's only one set of footprints. I don't understand why in those times. When I needed you the most, that you should leave me. The Lord replied, My precious, precious child, I love you. I would never, never leave you during your times of trial and suffering. When you saw there was only one set of footprints, <coughs> it was the end that I carried you. You could almost say the last line yourself, couldn't you? Because you've read it so many times. You read it. Those of you who read it know that story, right? That's your favorite line, isn't it? I carried you. During those most troubled times, I carried you. That's a great comfort. But what's important to notice in that point is not just the end, where it says, during your most troubled times, I carried you. What's important to notice in there is that all along life's way, there were two sets of footprints.
He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. And yes, I'll carry you in those tough times. But what's important to that is that I am always with you. Always. Big word. Hard to pronounce. Hard to believe sometimes, isn't it? Always be with you. And that's where our hope and our faith must surely be. <coughs> and all God's people say,